getting dark outside. <laughs> so I got to kind of hurry up on this. But back in 2017, December of 2017, I repaired a perma drive, servo drive model PMD 4Q IA2. Had uh, electrolytic capacitors on that drive that had failed. They had leaked, uh, they were leaky and shorted so the drive would not work. Uh, so here, five years later, <laughs> nearly five years later, we're going to talk about the hookups. Uh, where'd all that time go? The world's changed immensely since that time. Well, here we go. Here's the power uh, terminal board of the drive. It's a Phoenix connector. Uh, we have B3, B2, and B1. If we're going to use the internal regenerative braking circuit, a uh, resistor, I mean, we apply a jumper right here to B3 and B2, and that's the way the drive entered the shop. If we use an external regenerative braking resistor. We connect that from B1 to B3. We take that jumper off and we connect that resistor from B1 to B3. But in our case, the customer was using the internal regenerative braking resistor, so it was jumped out. The Permadrive servo motor type BL7224 is connected U to U, V to V, and W to W. This is a servo motor, so you have to connect it in that manner. If you, uh, say for instance, connect V to U, U to V, W to W, you mix up those connections, it will not run correctly. It will not run smoothly. It will jump all over your bench. So U to U, V to V, W to W. This drive is powered up with 220 volts AC single phase connected to L and N on this connector. Be careful because there's a lot of drives out there that may use uh, 110 volts AC. So always check your data plate. And if it doesn't have a data plate, you can map that line input and see the values of the bus capacitors. Uh, and that will clue you in to the line voltage input. Now let's go down and we're going to look at what enables this motor to run. The speed reference, the speed reference that makes the motor run counterclockwise or clockwise. We will look at the feedback. We had a tack feedback and hall effect feedback. We'll look at the connections for that. And also the motor had an electromechanical brake. We'll look at where that gets hooked up. Let's go down and we will look at those connections. There's another Phoenix connector. Now over here we have the motor terminal board for that type BL7224 servo motor. Here is the drive connections. So we have an enable switch on pin 1, switch to ground on pin 2. When we close this switch right here, that servo motor that servo drive will run that servo motor. Speed and direction, pin 5. We have on pin 4, a negative 10 volts DC. On pin 6, we have a positive 10 volts DC. Out here on the wiper of this 5 kilo ohm potentiometer, on the wiper, 
we have that variable voltage from minus 10 up here to plus 10 down here. So that when we swing this potentiometer to negative 10 volts DC, that motor will run counterclockwise. At max speed, if you bring it all the way up to minus 10 volts DC on pin 5, and it will run clockwise when we swing that potentiometer all the way to plus 10 volts DC here on pin 6 so that we have plus 10 volts DC on pin 5. And it will run at max speed. So when you swing just a little bit here or there, it will run slowly in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction based on where you have this potentiometer set. There's tap feedback from the motor. Here's our motor terminal board right here. On 13 and 14, we have tap feedback from the motor connected to 13 and 14 on that Phoenix connector of the servo drive. The Hall effects down here on pin 20, the drive provides plus 15 volts DC on pin 20 to the Hall effect inside that servo motor to power up the Hall effects. And ground of the plus 15 volts DC to power up the Hall effects are on pin 16. So pin 16 of the Phoenix connector goes to pin 16 of the terminal board on the servo motor. Plus 15 volts DC pin 20 goes to pin 20 on that terminal board of the servo motor. The Hall effects, now I'm not really sure because the documentation that I had from the customer uh, indicated that these were the Hall effect feedbacks, but I don't know who Hall effect 1 is. I just wrote Hall effect 1 going to 17. Hall Effect 2 going to 18, Hall Effect 3 going to 19. It could be the other way around. It might be 1, 2, 3 here. But they, from the drive, connect to 17, 18, and 19 on the terminal board of the motor. This drive had a mechanical, an electromechanical brake to hold position with an electromechanical brake. Uh, usually when you have an electromechanical brake in a motor, it's holding position so that that axis does not drop from gravity. Uh, so here, from an external power supply, I applied plus 24 volts to the B terminal. This is where the brown wire is, I'll show you a picture of that in a minute, and ground of that external power supply going to the blue wire of the servo motor terminal board. There's our hookups. That's what we need to make that perma drive servo motor run with the perma drive servo drive. Let's take a look at some of my pictures of that drive. Here's the terminal board of the servo motor. Now we have 13 and 14 were the TAC output of this servo motor. 20 was plus 15 volts DC to power up the Hall effects inside that motor. A 16 was ground of that power supply from the drive to power up the Hall effects. And then 17, 18, and 19 were the Hall effect inputs. And again, I wasn't sure who Hall effect 1 was. It could be 17 or 19. I don't have good documentation on that drive. Uh, luckily, 17, 18, and 19 corresponded to 17, 18, and 19 
on the drive's Phoenix connector, so all I had to do was go straight over. Here's UVW to the motor of UV and W connections from the servo motor to the drive. Now down here is BV. You put 24 volts in ground from an external power supply into BB and that releases the electromechanical brakes so that that motor can rotate. Here are the connections to the control and feedback of that servo drive. So here's terminal one and two. That's where our enable switch was connected. Four, five, and six was our speed reference potentiometer, speed and direction, was connected here on four, five, and six. Four being negative 10 volts DC, five being ref in, reference input, six being plus 10 volts DC. Over here, 13 and 14, that's our TAC input. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 20 being plus 15 out to the motor to power up the uh, Hall effect input. And 16 being its ground. 17, 18, and 19 being the Hall effect inputs into this drive to uh, provide proper phase firing of that servo motor from the servo, servo drive. Now here is the power connection. 220 volts AC single phase connect to L and N on these two terminals right here. The motor, I don't have it connected here at this point, the motor connects to U, V, and W. Here you can see this jumper right here. That is jumped so that the internal regenerative braking resistor is used. If you wanted to use an external regenerative braking resistor, it would connect to B1 and B3. Here are the power transformers that take 220 volts single phase from the line in and power up the control voltages and the firing channel voltages. You can look at these labels right here and they will say PRI 220V. <laughs> and so that, that's an indication of, of what the line voltage is coming in on this drive. Be careful now with things that you're working on. You don't want to overvolt anything because uh, uh, when you do, you end up making more work for yourself than you had before. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that. Now, um, when I get done here, I'm going to go and make me some cornbread because, uh, you know, I like cornbread. I really like cornbread. I hope you all do too. If you've never had it, you ought to. Go down to your grocery store and see if they got the mixings to make cornbread. It's a, it's a treat. I don't get it all the time. And when I do, it's a, it's a treat. It's something that uh, you can look forward to. Well, try it out if you can. Sun's going down. The birds are coming in on the bird feeders. They're going to fill up their bellies before it gets cold tonight. Enjoy the time with your families. Enjoy the time on this side of the dirt. And we'll see you next time.